Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, six fizzes in front of me, uh, two Proseccos um, for, from the Loire. Um, why have I put them together? Well, I thought two Proseccos by itself was, I don't know, they'd have felt a bit lonely. So I'm starting with them, both on label. First one is Spa's own label, Perlezza Prosecco Brut, non-vintage, just Prosecco, uh, no particular region or anything. Give it a whirl. Smells soft, ever so slightly nutty. Maybe not as fruity as uh, I, I, would, I would like it to be, but um, it smells okay. You come to taste it and more of that nutty, uh, creamy character comes through. Uh, as I thought from when I smelt it, I, yeah, I'd like a little bit more fruit in there. Some of that, what I call the apple spume that I get uh, uh, with, with quite a lot of Prosecco. It's one of those wines that you chill it down um, and uh, shove it in a glass and uh, no one is going to complain. But uh, I don't know, I want a little bit more personality. Oh, am I going to sneeze? No, I don't think I'm going to sneeze. Uh, because hopefully this is a wine that is not to be sneezed at. See what I did then? Uh, this is Harvey Nichols uh, Prosecco uh, Valdobbiadini Superiore, made for them by Sorella Bronca. Let's give this one a whirl. And this is much more what I was expecting. It's got that touch of dolly mixture with that uh, cooked apple foam character. Um, there's a soft fleshiness about, uh, about the apple flavours here, or apple aromas here, I haven't tasted it yet, uh, but it smells like it's going to be a more satisfying, more full-bodied, fruitier, more interesting and complex wine. And yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, as I say, expected. Lots of flavour, uh, and also undercutting all those flavours, that slight dolly mixture, sherbety sweetness, and those apple flavours. Uh, there's a touch of what I call pumice stone like minerality. Uh, yes, a little bit of life beyond the fruit there. Um, much the better uh, of the two, those two, but I imagine much the higher price. But not probably not too expensive, but um, uh, certainly worth the extra money. Let's try the four from the Loire. Um, and three of them are the Wine Society's own bottlings, made from them by Gratian and Meyer, uh, who I think they've been working with for donkey's years, hundreds and, not hundreds of years, but well over a hundred years. Um, so first one I've got is the Society's Saumur Brut, and um, made from Chenin Blanc, Cabernet Franc, and Chardonnay. And uh, let's give this one a whirl. A bit of a sea change after the Prosecco. This feels like it's going to be quite dry and have that sharp character um, of, um, of the Loire. It's, it's some of that uh, edge of flintiness I even get in here. I don't think there's any Sauvignon in the blend, but uh, it feels like there's some uh, of that uh, tense mineral character. It smells uh, fresh uh, and it smells, yeah, it smells like it's going to be maybe just a little sharp. Let's try. That's what, uh, I don't know how much Shannon in, in, is in that blend, but um, it's, it's the main, the first grape on that, on that, that list. And it's got that uh, Shannon tension between uh, rounded, slightly nutty, ripe, cooked apple fruit and the acidity. So there's the acidity keeping it friend, uh, fresh, there's the uh, fruit, fruit fleshiness to, um, to balance it, and uh, the two work nicely together. Some people will prefer the softer, um, more mellow style of the Prosecco, some people will prefer that uh, sharper, more tense style. I like them both. And I think it would be uh, how the mood strikes me, which one of those I prefer. Let's try their celebration. Uh, Cremant de Loire, 2010 vintage, um, and um, blah, 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 blah. a large proportion of Chardonnay in the blend. I uh, don't know what the rest of it is going to be, but uh, let's give this one a whirl. Well, I've just checked somewhere else, and it's about 50-50 Chardonnay and Chenin with a little uh, spoonful of Cabernet Franc in there. Uh, I stick my nose in there, and it's a much more backward wine than the, uh, uh, the, the, the Saumur one. Uh, uh, Saumur was. I get this uh, prickle of uh, sulphur dioxide that's uh, making, uh, catching me slightly on the back of my throat. And um, yes, it's one of those that not jumping out. Let's see whether it jumps out when I, uh, when I come to taste it. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. There's this, as I say, this sulfury character in there. Um, I, I smell the sulfur dioxide, but I also uh, smell and taste. Did you used to have that pink penicillin medicine when you, were, when you were a child? There's some of that character in there. A slightly strange, sweet metallic character. Um, I actually think I prefer the Saumur of those two. Uh, of those two. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, about a couple of pounds cheaper, but um, today at least it's, uh, it's looking better to me. 
Let's see whether the second Cremant de Loire can uh, uh, come up with the goods. This is Domaine des Hautes Perret, Cremant de Loire Les Hautes Perret, um, and non vintage, is it? I can't see a, a vintage on here, but um, anyway, let's give this one a whirl. This is more in the uh, fresh apple character, uh, but uh, fresh apple that's just been left a little bit uh, out in the sunlight and has gone ever so slightly brown. So you're getting this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, slightly browning green apple flavours. Uh, it smells, it, it actually smells more like uh, some champagnes than, uh, uh, than, uh, than Loire fizz. Uh, I, I, I don't notice as much of that nuttiness which, which would have put me on the Chenin Blanc trail. Maybe there is a healthy dollop of Chardonnay in there. I, I'm not sure. But anyway, let's taste it. And then when you taste it, that's when that honeyed nuttiness of Chenin kicks in. Uh, it's quite a rich, uh, rich rounded flavour. Um, off dry, uh, no, not off dry, but there's, it feels like they, they've left a, a, enough uh, sweetness in there to balance out that touch of sharpness and that green apple acidity. There's a little bit of lemon in there. Uh, but uh, yes, it's it's one of those uh, more in the mould of the Saumur. Probably a little bit more concentration and maybe a little bit more delicacy. And um, yeah, I, I do like that. I'm going to have another swig. Yeah. Okay. Final one. Uh, it's a pinky. Uh, we're back with Saumur and uh, the Saumur Brut Rosé. Um, Cabernet Franc with a touch of Grolu. Give it a whirl. I have to say I don't smell an awful lot when I stick my nose in there. Got a, maybe a slight uh, honeyed nuttiness about it, but um, I don't notice too much in the way of fruit. And uh, it doesn't feel like there's any rich floral characters or anything. Maybe it'll be better when I taste it. It's okay. Um, simple, slightly sherbety. A little bit of strawberry flavour in there, but uh, overall it's not... It's not my favourite. Favourites, I think. Um, well, I like the I like the uh, Harvey Nix Prosecco, and I like the Society Sumio Brut, and I like the uh, non-Society Cremant de Cremant de Loire. Hey, they were okay. See you soon.